Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor and we have an enhanced risk for much of the East Coast today. Let's go ahead and dive right into this. Alright, so this is the situation we have right here. Okay, I didn't mean to do that, but this is the situation we have right here. There's an enhanced risk from Richmond all the way up to upstate New York right here. Slight risk from New England all the way down to North Carolina. Marginal risk from Georgia all the way up to Maine. So that's basically what we, ha uh, basically what we have right here. Uh, let's look at the threats right here. The tornado threat's at 2% for today, so that's not really going to be that big of an issue. The wind threat, though, is going to be the biggest threat for this, these areas today. There's a 30% risk of 60 mile per hour winds in this area right here. The hail threat is also uh, not, it's not terrible, but it's also, it's, it also, uh, it's also could be better. So it's at 15% right here. So we could, so the main threats here are very, are damaging winds and, and potentially large hail right here. So let's go ahead and read the summary in, par, in some parts of this. Summary, scattered damaging winds, isolated severe hail, and a couple of brief tornadoes are likely into the early evening across parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states. Scattered severe wind gusts and isolated large hail are also, pro are also possible across a portion of the southern high plains during the late afternoon and evening, mid-Atlantic into the northeast. A short wave trough over the upper Ohio Valley and Great Lakes will be uh, will progress e east northeast into the into the New England tonight by tonight as an associated surface cyclone deepens across the St. Lawrence Valley and trailing cold front likewise moves east and offshore tonight. Low to mid 60s boundary layer dew points are common ahead of the front. If in moderate surface heating and cloud breaks will support a plume of 15 500 to 1500 joules per kilogram of Cape. That's not. That's generally not good for tornado development or anything like that, so that's why they're going with the 2% risk for this, but they, but it is a okay amount for potentially large hail right there. So that's basically what this is, what this is saying right here. Deep layer flow vertical shear will increase in the approach of the mid-level trough from the west, contributing to an environment supporting of... of supportive of organized line segments and some supercell structures. Scared thunderstorms are ongoing in parts of the warm... The uh, warm conveyor regime ahead of the cold front and across central Pennsylvania and western New York. This activity will likely be the primary focus for damaging winds pot uh, potential as it likely intensifies across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. Additional thunderstorms should develop further south, perhaps in multiple waves, emanating the first wave of uh, first off of the lee trough and later in, off the cold front. With greater deep layer shear across the lower mid-Atlantic uh, region and potentially somewhat higher buoyancy if cloud breaks can become more pronounced. A mix of both isolated large hail as well as scattered da uh, damaging winds are expected. So, this severe weather right here, I'm looking at it. Uh, I said this, or I said it yesterday. This is go this area, this these slight and enhanced risks. This is encompassing almost 60 million people. So, 60 about so 60 almost 60 million people could be seeing some severe weather for today so i just want to reiterate that and i put that in my last video let's go ahead and actually go ahead and look at the models real quickly let's go to the her let's go to the mid-atlantic right here just to show you guys what's going on let's go to the latest completed run right here the 15z or about 10 a.m let's go to the surface cape the cape for uh, for the, these parts of the the day they're at like uh they're like i said it's it, like they said, it's at 500 to 1500. There's some areas cracking close to 2000 in some of these areas, but it basically just uh, is gone by the time uh, by the late evening. So that's essentially what's going on. Let's go ahead and look at the dew points for this. The dew points aren't terrible for severe weather. They're at the 60s and everything. They we this although this isn't the best environment for it either. So yeah, damaging winds are to get an appeal, the primary primary threat for this. This is the amount of moisture you're going to need for it. Let's go ahead and look at the temperatures. Yeah, there's going to be enough uh, heating for this as well. There, this cold front is right here. This area right here, there's going to be more than enough uh, temperature uh, temperature uh, for that to do to happen. So that's basically what's go going on with day one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the day two outlook right here. All right, the day two outlook, we have a slight risk for parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, Iowa, and Missouri right here. Marginal risk from Texas to Wyoming all the way to St. Louis right here. So that's basically what we have. Let's look at the tornado threat. The tornado threats, it's still minuscule. It's around 2% right here. The wind threat's at 15%, which encompasses most of this area right here. 
Uh, the hail threat is also at 15%, so the primary threat for tomorrow is going to be wind and hail, and as more information comes, we'll, uh, we'll have more to tell. So let's go ahead and read sum the summary as well as uh, what's going to happen. There's a slight risk of severe thunderstorms across the Central Plains and Missouri Valley. Summary, at least uh, potential, at least isolated severe storms are expected across portions of the Central Plains and lower middle, middle to lower Missouri Valley Tuesday and Tuesday night. Uh, Central Plains into the Middle Missouri uh, Middle Missouri Valley, potential a uh, potentially lo uh, multiple low uh, amplitude disturbances, some of which may be convectively augmented, will overspread the uh, Central Rockies, Central Plains into the Lower Miz uh, Missouri Valley on Tuesday amidst a ribbon of moderately strong west uh, west northwesterly flow aloft. A strong elevated uh, mixed layer will. Uh, will advect eastward over the region and tend to uh, limit the likelihood of uh, or confidence of uh, in deep convective development in the southward extent across the region. At least widely scattered thunderstorms may be ongoing across the region early Tuesday night, some of which may produce isolated severe hail, uh, co uh, co uh, co uh, coincident uh, with ample in elevated instability in the edge of the elevated mixed layers. With afternoon heating and mixing, uh, the boundary layer will otherwise become moderately to strongly unstable by late Tuesday afternoon. At least an isolated or widely scattered uh, de uh, deeply convective development appears possible, uh, possible, especially probable, especially near the boundary across the uh, Nebraska Southwest South Dakota into northern Kansas. Other potentially strong severe thunderstorms, albeit. Uh, albeit by lesser buoyancy, may develop across eastern Wyoming and northeast Colorado with an evolving low-level upscale regime. With moderate strength westerly of, uh, uh, of flow aloft, some initial supercells could be expected with multi-cell along with multi-cells and a potential evolution of multiple clusters. Large hail and damaging winds are expected to the primary hazards. So the storm, uh, storm should increase in coverage tor uh, toward and after the sunset as the low-level jet re-intensifies and uh, contributes to the uh, east south uh, southwest eastward excuse me presence persistence of storms Tuesday night some of which may remain severe into the overnight so that's what we have right here let's actually shift ge let's actually shift gears to the central great plains right here to see the cape with this we're gonna actually go back to the 12z f uh, for this one because this goes further out so this is basically the kind of cape we're looking at right here the cape here for the cape for parts of the great plains is pretty impressive in parts of Kansas and Missouri where the severe risk is. We're seeing areas that are cracking 3,500, 3,000, 3,500 in a couple of areas. Uh, generally, it's around 2,000 to 3,000 in a lot of these areas. So it's a good amount of instability for some uh, for some hail, a couple of tornadoes maybe. But that's pretty much that's pretty much the generic stuff we're going to be seeing with that. So that's basically for day two. Day three, there's a marginal risk for this area. We don't have to cover that. Uh, we don't really need to cover that. But days four, five, and six are pretty interesting. Day four uh, has a 15% risk for most of Minnesota, most of Wisconsin, most of Iowa, as well as parts of South Dakota and Nebraska right here. Day five, there's not much of a change. It encompasses it's from da the Dallas area all the way to the, the upper Michigan, right? Up the way up to Michigan. It encompasses a lot of Michigan, most of Indiana, most of Illinois, most of Missouri, most of Arkansas, parts of Oklahoma, and parts in, in basically the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area. So that's basically what's going on. Let's look at the amount of people this may affect. 35 million people. So everyone needs to take uh, keep an eye on the weather and take this seriously. This is for day five. I'll be keeping a close eye on it and updating you guys as the situation develops. The day six severe other outlook. It goes from as a 15% risk from Kentucky up to upstate New York right here. So this is basically what we have right here, affecting another 11 million people. So I'll be keeping a close eye on it. Let's go ahead and read the uh, let's go ahead and read the discussion for this. For day four Thursday, severe weather potential is expected uh, to be focused uh, across the upper Midwest. With this relates to the expected ampl uh, amplification of an upper uh, upper trough over the northern plains and an increasingly moist air mass that is likely to develop northward across the upper Midwest ahead of the cold front. Severe thunderstorms on Thursday currently appear most probable across portions of the Iowa and Minnesota and into Wisconsin. On day five, a broad, warm, moist sector ahead of, the cold, of a cold front and a prominent uh, amplifying upper trough over the northern plains and upper Midwest is expected to lead to a broad, severe weather potential across the Midwest, Great Lakes, vicinity, south uh, westward towards the Ozarks and Arklatex region. 
On day six Saturday, while the while upstream storms may linger early in the day ahead of the cold front, additional thunderstorm development and intensification should occur along the upper Ohio Valley and the central and northern Appalachian vicinity as the air mass durnial destabilizes. Durnial destabilizes. Moderate, st uh, moderately strong southwesterly winds should contribute to organized storms capable of damaging winds and some hail. So, like we don't know exactly the, the risks with this. We just know that this uh, that there is a 15% risk of severe weather days four, five, and six. So that's basically the situation we have. Day seven, day eight, potential too low and predictability too low. So yeah, that's essentially the situation we have right here. And with that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal with this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. So with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.